we are going to see different types of uh, gradient descent. So there are mainly two types of gradient descent algorithm. One is gradient descent with the momentum and the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, this categorization is done based on when we update the weight and bias values. Okay. So we can uh, update the weights and biases uh, in different ways. Okay. So this is the weight adjustment uh, equation gradient descent Q, uh, theta next is equal to theta minus theta into uh, dou c by dou theta. So theta is the weight value and theta is the learning rate. And uh, this calculation of uh, this gradient differs at, uh, in these two different methods. Okay. Gradient descent optimization approaches can be divided into three main categories. One is full batch gradient descent or it is also called as batch gradient descent, then stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent. And out of these three methods, this full batch and mini batch are called momentum based gradient descent. Momentum means we have to memorize something. We have to memorize the gradient of each, each sample. Okay, we have to me memorize the gradients for every sample. And how long we memorize it, that uh, depending on that, we have full batch and mini batch gradient descent. Okay, assume we have a training data set with the 10 samples. Okay, so these are the 10 samples. We have data 1, data 2, two data 10. And this is our uh, theta, uh, theta next is equal to theta minus theta rho c by rho theta. And how do we find this uh, the gradient, rho c by rho theta? We, we can do it in different ways. First one is uh, we are finding out the derivative of, uh, with respect to the first data. Um, then we find the derivative with respect to the second data. Like that, we are finding the derivative for every data. So we find the derivative for the entire uh, data set. Okay, we have 10 samples, we have taken 10 samples and find the derivative. And then we have to find out the average. So we have 10 derivatives over here. We have to find the average of all gradients. Okay, then this average uh, gradient is substituted in this equation to find the theta value. Okay, so dou c by dou theta here means that that is the average gradient. Um, the gradient taken for all the samples. Okay, so this approach is called full batch gradient descent or in short we call it as batch gradient descent. So we take the derivative for all the samples. If we have 1 million data, you have to find the derivative for the 1 million data. Then find the average of all those derivatives. Then substitute that derivative in this equation to update the weights. That is full batch gradient descent. So that means that we have to remember all these derivatives in order to reach the final answer. Okay, we have to remember the derivative of the first one, second one, third one, like that. Okay, that's why it is called uh, this gradient descent with the momentum. And in the second method, we find the derivative uh, uh, of first data. Then based on this derivative, substitute this derivative in this equation to update the theta value and using that theta value again we find the derivative with respect to the second data okay so you for this data we find the derivative and take this derivative substitute in this equation and update the theta value and that means after reading every data we are going to update the theta value okay so what is the advantage we need not memorize these uh, derivatives Okay, so it goes like that. Weight is updated after reading every sample. So this approach is called the stochastic gradient descent. It is the second method. And there is one more method. Um, uh, uh, here we have to group the data into different batches. Okay, suppose we have 10 data over here. I, uh, I group 5 data in a batch. Okay. So in the first batch I have these 5 data and in the second batch I have the remaining 5 data. 
and we are going to find out the derivative. We take the first batch and find the derivative for all the samples in this batch. Okay, five data is there. So you find the derivative, dou c by dou theta for, for all the five data. And then take the average of these derivatives. And this derivative, this average derivative is substituted in this equation to find out the uh, new theta value or in order to update the theta value. Okay, so we have taken one batch of uh, data and find the derivative for all the samples and take the average and update theta. Then the similar thing will be uh, repeated for all other batches also. Take the next batch, find the derivatives and take the average of those derivatives and based on this derivative update theta. Okay, so take each batch and find the derivative uh, of for all the samples in a particular batch and take the average and find the um, next theta y. So weight is updated by taking the average gradient of all samples in a particular batch. So this approach is called mini batch gradient descent. Okay, this is mini batch gradient descent. So these are the three methods. In this mini batch also we have to memorize uh, uh, these uh, gradients. Okay, so in a mini batch you have five um, data set the data. So you have to memorize the uh, derivative of the first data, second data, third data, and fourth data. And when you get the fifth derivative, you, you have to sum up all those five and uh, get it. So assume that you, you have millions of data and in a single batch you have thousands of data. So this will be a, uh, a constraint. Uh, but anyway, mini batch is the most appro most um, uh, famous method in uh, gradient descent. This is the uh, in applications we use in practical applications we use mini batch gradient descent. And if you have any memory constraints, then you have to go for stochastic gradient descent. So these are the differences.